Hello, my name is Dr. Robert O'Dell. I'm an anesthesiologist and a pain management physician here in Los Angeles, and I'd like to talk a little bit about a unique treatment for neuropathies that we're doing here at my clinic. As you probably know, neuropathy is quite prevalent. It affects about 3 to 8.2 percent of the population, and the prevalence probably increases with age. As many of you may know, you can have neuropathy even before you know it. And those of you that have it know the terrible problems you have with numbness, um, not being able to wear shoes and socks, difficulty walking, knowing where your feet are in space, and of course the pain, the numbness, and the dysesthesias. Dysesthesias meaning the shooting pains. That uh, many patients uh, describe to me that they uh, can't walk for a long distance. Um, many of them tell me how this problem really affects our quality of life more than any other aspect of diabetes. The current state of treatment neuropathy is not very good. The 50-50 rule states that if a drug works on 50% of the people and gets them 50% better, it is acceptable. As you know, Neurontin and Gabapentin and Lyrica or pregabalin are the only two real good treatments for neuropathy and their treatment profile includes side effects, patients feeling like zombies, things like that. I'd like to define neuropathy as pain arising as a direct consequence of a lesion or a disease affecting the somatosensory system. This is according to TREED. The causes of neuropathy, as you know, include diabetes, viral infections including post neuralgia, diabetes, and PHN being the two greatest causes of neuropathy. Uh, AIDS or HIV, chemical insults, mechanical insults like uh, disc disease for neuropathies, uh, CRPS, central neuropathies from strokes, spine surgery, and amputation. We'd like to focus specifically on diabetic neuropathy because this is the number one cause. The problem with diabetic neuropathy, as you know, is patients who have loss of peripheral sensation often will injure their foot and this can lead to amputation. The cost of an amputation in the first year ranges between $120,000 and $150,000. My colleague, Dr. Anthony Ricciardi, a podiatrist in town, and I have started a diabetic neuropathy and limb preservation center, where our goal is to prevent just this, namely through treating the neuropathy initially, if that doesn't work, utilizing some of his podiatric skills to prevent the amputation. Now, our treatment is new and unique, and it's a very, very safe treatment. We use physics instead of chemistry. We're utilizing electricity from a machine, electroanalgesia machine like this, to treat the cells. We're signaling the cells, we're not smothering them. This is a paradigm shift that we hope takes place over the next years in medicine. Rather than treating people with chemicals, we treat them with physics. I would like to talk about how we treat these. We utilize the electroanalgesia treatments along with peripheral injections. The first aspect of this is the peripheral injection. In general, for diabetic neuropathy and other lower extremity neuropathies, it involves a lower extremity injection just above the ankle. We use a low dose and low volume of local anesthetic. The local anesthetic is allowed to move into the nerve cells by anaphoresis according to the laws of physics when this electrical device is applied just after, just after the block. We go ahead and do the block, both ankles, we do them twice a week, and we actually allow patients to, to drive home. The reason we do this is because the dosage is low and the volume is low. We are not doing a surgical block. We then apply the machine treatment to the patient after this. This device is way more sophisticated than TENS, although there are TENS frequencies built into it. I can't get into all the physics of the device. Uh, it's beyond the scope of this talk. But basically, what we will do will stimulate the neurons. We can activate the pain-suppressing neuromodulators. We actually are giving an electrical modality, which is a pharmaceutical strength. In other words, instead of giving a pill, we're utilizing electricity. There's absolutely no risk. I tell my patients that the only way I can harm them with this machine is if I drop it on their head. The injections themselves, you can imagine with diabetics, you have to be very careful of their feet. We inject the patients in different spots up and down the leg, and we watch their feet like hawks to make sure that there's no lesions as a result of the injection and this is very very rare. Now 
These complex waveforms are designed to reduce inflammation. Uh, I have a, a paper in the latest issue in November, December of Pain Physician, which describes some of these biochemical mechanisms. We increase the blood flow via uh, blocking the sympathetic nervous system. We increase cyclic AMP into the cell. That second messenger is good for cell uh, health. And, and when I say cell here, I'm referring to the nerve cell as well as the muscle cell. The nerves and the muscles have the lowest resistance, as I'll allude to in a minute. We're enhancing metabolism and the diffusion of cell waste products away. We're also blocking the neuron. This device actually blocks the nerve open. All of the sodium, potassium, calcium channels are, are opening and closing in equilibrium and it allows the cell to freely metabolize. This is healing. The uh, chemical block closes clamps down. You can't do surgery with electric, with electric nerve block. With a chemical block you can. Somehow the combination enhances the effects of both and you get uh, 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 excellent results. Now the final thing that this will do will be repair stabilization of the cell membranes both muscular and uh, uh, neuron which is so important for healing. Now why does this work so well? Five times the electricity will go to the nerves, then to the muscles. By example, the, um, by, by contrast, the uh, bones have a resistance of 160,000 ohms. So if you have a pipe that's 160,000 centimeters wide in diameter versus one centimeter, where is the, where is the water going to go? So what this does is the, the medicine, the local anesthetic, is anaphoresed or moved into the cells mostly the, muscle, the nerve cells and then secondly the muscle cells. Keep in mind that the greatest source of pain is is the muscles and the nerves. And we know in neuropathy that, that the nerves are the problem. This also by the way works in inflammatory problems in the foot. I get referrals from local podiatrists all the time who have had sur done surgery on patients who have some inflammatory condition and it works very well. One of our patients it was a, actually a female jet mechanic here, at, here in Las Vegas, was referred to me. She could not wear steel-toed shoes because of an inflammation from twice-operated plantar fasciitis. We injected the ankle immediately. We injected the plantar fasciitis. We waited about five minutes so the injection wouldn't hurt as much. And after five or six injections over uh, about uh, a three or four week period, she was pain-free and she was actually able to go back to work. What are the other things that this does? We depolarize the nerve cells, as I mentioned. We normalize the cell activities and allows the cells to heal themselves. The key thing here is that the combination of the local anesthetic and the physics provided by this fancy electrical current will, in fact, allow the body to heal itself. The body does a much better job of healing than we as physicians do. We're just allowing the cells through signaling to heal itself. I cannot overemphasize how safe this treatment is. Um, in summary, we have increased effectiveness, we have way decreased risk, we have decreased in side effects. How many patients have described to you what kind of zombies they are when they take Neurontin and, 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 uh, and Lyrica? Um, we, can de we feel we can decrease the cost over time because if a patient is on these drugs, or it, they might even be on narcotics, the cost of these will be eliminated, essentially. We also get a greater longevity of benefits, and the mechanism of action is multiple and complex, but these mechanisms have a very solid basis in citations through the literature dating back to the 20th century. Now, some other additional considerations, indications would include fibromyalgia. There have been groups of treated fibromyalgia by just treating the area of greatest pain, for example, the low back. Then we use what we call a metabolic sweep to treat the whole entire body. After about a week, the fibro patients generally have a much easier time of sleeping and they're, they uh, uh, continue to start to do very, very well. Myofascial pain, trigger points, cervical sprain strain, whiplash, a lumbosacral sprain and strain, radicular pain. I am an interventional pain management specialist and I will do a, an ep epidural in the back. Go ahead and treat the patient with the electrodes, these uh, vasopulse electrodes here that go down the leg in the distribution of the uh, radiculopathy and this works in my opinion, way better than steroids. We actually can do more than the three blocks because we're not using steroids. The anti-inflammatory effect is happening right here. Uh, we treated RSD and also other peripheral neuropathies. Some other uses include with neuraxial blocks, 
to enhance the effectiveness of epidurals, as I mentioned. We've used this uh, technique with people with uh, failed spine fusion syndrome. Many of these patients have no other options. We've been amazed with some of the results that we have seen. In closing, I'd like to thank you for listening. We certainly, if you haven't come to the clinic already, urge you to come and see me. Uh, we're located at 8084 West Sahara, and we look forward uh, to seeing you. And thank you very much. It was mostly numbness. Okay. And on my legs, it was from my toes to my knees. And I always felt like I was wearing socks. I would go in the shower and look down, and my wearing, you know, it always felt like that. And that's gone now. Wow. And now, from the knee to the ankle, I have feeling. I was also numb from the fingertips to the elbow. And I was constantly burning myself because I didn't feel the heat until after I already blistered. Now, that's gone. It's, I have feeling now. I was told it was diabetic neuropathy. I really expected to be in one of those motorized wheelchairs within a year or two. That's how bad it was. If you live here in Las Vegas, you know, Dr. Odell is really close by, and I know other doctors from other, par other states have been coming to watch him do the treatment, so I figured, you know, it sounded good. And I thought, might as well try it, and it worked. I started seeing results the second treatment. I had a push walker in the house, and that stays in the trunk of the car now. And uh, I can cook again. <laughs> uh, it started out by not being able to walk up the stairs, and when I did, it was I was walking on my toes, so I would hear popping every time. I was walking up the stairs, and I thought it was normal. Never really went to a doctor for it. Then I got pregnant with my second child and it got worse. So I went to a doctor and found that there actually is something wrong. <laughs> and um, had surgery twice without checking on the background of the doctors. And the neuromas came back. My foot was just a mess with scar tissue. So every time I would walk and wear any shoe that would incline my foot, it would pop. So it was very uncomfortable and it, when I would get the pain, it would go a sharp pain from my foot up to my leg. With surgery, two times, it was good for just a few months and then the neuromas would come back and get tangled up, which neuroma is um, a cluster of nerves. And um, it would come back and they would do surgery again. And I was, you have to be off your foot because it's on your foot and I didn't have time to have that downtime. So that's when I uh, met up with Dr. Ordell and he did the uh, electric stimulation. I don't know the exact medical form. I think I was hooked up for 15 minutes. It starts out, I think, at 25 minutes and then you work your way down. Um, I would do it when my kids were in school or preschool and that gave me a two hour frame. And I live about 30 minutes from here. So I drove every day, three days a week, to do this. Dr. Ordell was phenomenal with letting me know what he was doing. He um, would numb me, you know, with the cold spray. He would put a block, I think we did three or four total blocks. He had to go through the scar tissue, you know, and the nerves had grown in the scar tissue and grown everywhere else. He always asked me my pain level, was always, took the time with me. It wasn't just a doctor that was in and out of the office. And um, the outcome of my left foot is extraordinary. I can go to dinner with my husband, my family, and wear a nice pair of heels and not have an extra pair of shoes in the car for that 30 minute dinner. I didn't know how much money I was going to be paying out of my pocket and it actually majority of it was covered under insurance and, um, and when I started to see that it worked, I didn't care how much it cost at that point because I didn't have the time nor did I want to go through surgery again. I've actually referred a couple of people here already because our feet are life. You're on your feet every day, your whole life. So you need to take care of them. And it's not just the elderly that have these foot problems. And that's why I thought there was nothing wrong with my feet. I thought I was too young. <laughs>